We're going to continue talking about the Apple, well, Epic versus Apple. I always say Apple versus Epic, um, but I think that's just because Apple, I'm always hungry. So I think food <laughs> before anything else. Uh, Fair so, enough. <laughs> Uh, let us know what you think about what we've been discussing here, especially about what's coming up, because there's been a lot of random facts no one thought of um, that we would know or would even be relevant to this court case that for some reason is. So we're going to be talking about them. I, I hope you guys don't mind if I kind of talk about this one first. Is that OK with please you guys? Do. Yeah, because I know what it's going to be. And do you yeah, really? Please, yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. You, you should know. You guys know me so well. I'm, I'm getting the B-roll yeah. ready just to Here pull it, it up. So in this trial, it turns out that Xbox thought Breath of the Wild would to the sequel would come out in 2020 last year. I found that really interesting. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Completely not relevant to the trials, but the trials have <laughs> brought this out. And yeah. to me... Obviously, if a, a company to Xbox's scale is making this prediction, and they made other predictions as well, like Xbox thought a lot of different things were going to happen in 2020, I'm hoping this means that Breath of the Wild 2 is just around the corner. This year, maybe? E3 yeah, announcements? Oh. Plus, it's coming out in the fall? I mean... Yeah. I, I can see... Oof. Listen, I can Camille, I have, I have told you that you've put on the tinfoil hat a couple of times you have yeah i'm wearing it with you on this one yes. because i think you're on to something and i agree a company as big as xbox making that assumption yep means that they know some things or have at least heard some things through the grapevine um and if the game they were suspecting was supposed to come out or they were thinking was going to come out in 2020 yeah. uh i'm assuming it, it was maybe maybe it was Maybe it right. actually was traje like yeah. the trajectory was to have it come out that last year, but with everything that happened, they didn't talk about it. They just kept hush hush. And this E3, I think we're going to see another trailer. We're going to see some gameplay. And then right at the end, fall 2021 date. release date. And yeah. I, I, oh my God, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. <laughs> I, I just want to say, Camille, too, I was like lost watching the B-roll. Every time I see Breath of the Wild, I want to buy a Switch. Like, I want to go to Amazon oh, and have to. buy a Switch. If they do announce Breath of the Wild 2, I'm going to be buying a Switch. It's about and time. Yeah. It's the, the in-access of being able to get, or the inability to get a PS5 is just pushing me towards a Switch. Because mm. like, I can play all my Xbox games on PC, but like, I just I want to get into that world so bad because of how so much bad. joy like people like you and Caboose and everybody else has from it. It's one so thing I want to go back to that Caboose said was that um, you know we're we're under the assumption that you know Microsoft may have heard some things through the grapevine and they're they're kind of just throwing out their feelers saying like it might have come uh, last year. I want to just bring up the point that maybe this just goes to show how much respect Xbox has for the zelda brand because when you look at it last year xbox was readying to release their console sony was yep. doing the exact same thing it was it was basically known that nintendo wasn't coming out with the, the switch pro or mm. whatever the the next one was so what's the next best thing that they thought could compete with their console mm -hmm. breath of the wild too that's yep. the only thing that could even come close yeah and, true and I think that just goes a long way to to say, like, that's how much of a behemoth the Zelda brand is for Nintendo and how much reverence it has for Microsoft. Like, mm -hmm. well, it, it just says a lot. You're, you're absolutely right. It does say a lot because you have to think of why are we getting this random fact? Like, why would Xbox even talk about in, right. in communications when they think a game is coming out? And it's specifically for that reason they're aligning their releases um yeah. to better understand where those competition uh points would be throughout their calendar year and i mean that breath of the wild and the zelda franchise has become one of the very few franchises that has stood the test of time time yep. and time again and i Walk just want the second breath of the wild please <laughs> nintendo please. Please, no more trailers for Mario Golf. Just give us Breath of the Wild 2 with a release date, please. So now a question for all of you guys. Do you think that is coming out this year alongside the new Switch? Or do you think that they'll hold it? I, think uh, I can see a new Switch as well. 
big yeah. part of that maybe even a bundle yeah. nintendo's yeah. really good at when they release a console bundles are not too far um one thing mm. that's one thing that's really cheesed me in this past week playstation announced their dual sense controller in the midnight Ooh. color the and, and no so console crims, they're so nice i was the dummy when i got my playstation 5 i got two controllers why oh, did i do oh, that why did i do that and now that i, I know that we have like pretty much like the black version of a, a dual sense coming out um and i wanted that to kind of align with my aesthetic for all my consoles yeah. now i'm just like okay we know that their face plates are going to come for the playstation 5 or at least a new playstation 5 design so now i'm anyone who wants to buy my playstation 5 when we get that new design <laughs> <laughs> just just dm me I got one waiting yeah. for you, okay? Yeah. But that's cheesed me. But Nintendo, I have to say, is really good at when a game, Animal Crossing, right? When Animal Crossing came out, another huge title for Nintendo, mm -hmm. they had a Switch right then at release. So I yeah. feel like yeah. if we're going to see a new Switch um, console, it's going to come at the same time of Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. They want to sell it. They want people to buy it, and they know everyone has a Nintendo Switch now besides Malik. So they're gonna make that. Case <laughs> the marketing for why. is just for Malik, yeah. by the way. <laughs> well, look, here, Caboose. I'm gonna take the tin foil hat from him and borrow it really quick. Okay. Yeah. 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 You get a bundle. It's probably gonna be pretty pricey, but you get a Switch Pro, Breath of the Wild two, and Breath of the Wild one, mm -hmm. and yeah. they just give it to you all at once. And the thing is, is like people like me who haven't been able to get their hands on a Switch are going to buy that. But also people who bought the Switch when it first released, they're probably not starting to have issues with their Switch. But, you know, it, it's getting a, it might be getting a little bit dated. It might be getting mm -hmm. a little bit worn from the travel. If you got kids, they love to bang stuff around. So <laughs> the people who even have Switches now are probably going to be investing in another one. And it's crazy because that's going to make Switch not just like uh, like a common household thing you're gonna have a switch in almost every room you know what i mean like it's cheap enough and it's accessible enough that you can have a switch that you keep at home you can have a switch that you take with you you can have a switch that's for the kids like it's crazy the marketing that nintendo has done and like for microsoft to be cognizant of that just proves that like nintendo's a heavy hitter in this industry and they yeah. will be forever like mm -hmm. they're never gonna go away yeah, yeah. Another heavy hitter um, that we spoke about already, PlayStation. And another mm -hmm. interesting fact that came from these trials is Xbox's response to The Last of Us Part Two. Um, mm -hmm. So they have it that two members of the Xbox team, Mike Mace and John Katz, detailed in a document their playthrough of The Last of Us Part Two um, to their superiors. And they quoted it as being a game that is exceedingly rare and moves forward of uh, the art of narration, storytelling in video games. I, now, I think that... regardless, you know, like, uh, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, Camille, yeah. I just, I just think regardless of what your opinion is on the game, that statement is true. Yeah. You know, regardless of whether you liked the game or not, that is a truthful statement because this game and what it's done for, you know, just games in general and what it's done kind of in the industry, what, what the reaction has been to it and how strong of a reaction it's been is something that uh, that really kind of changed. No, nah, I wouldn't want to say changed everything, but has definitely made a huge impact. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's gotten a, the conversation going and people have been talking about it since it since the uh, the big thing leaked, which yeah. was months before it was supposed to come out. And that right. conversation continued and carried. Now, where are we? All the way in 2021. People are still talking about this game. And yeah, there's controversy, but people are still talking, talking about, about it. this game. Yeah. And know? that they, they go on to actually say that the art outweighs whether everyone likes the game or is just having fun playing it. And that's exactly that controversy over the yeah. thing, right? That is what that controversy is about. Is it a good mm -hmm. game? Because it's kind of made its own decisions regardless of what fans would have wanted um mm. and does that is that why it's a good game because of how it tells a story to mm -hmm. the um utmost i feel like transparency of how the developers 
would have wanted the story to be told um, and not listening to like those outside sources of, of like fans wanting the story to go a certain way. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it was just interesting to me that you have these two companies that we always put at a console war, uh, pitting them against each other, and how one of them, Xbox, is able to look at another one's game and be like, this is a truly amazing game. And, you mm -hmm. know, they haven't been really, this isn't necessarily shocking, um, but it's interesting to know because Xbox wasn't too mum about how they felt about The Last of Us. They've tweeted, um, Phil Spencer tweeted about the game, congratulating uh, Naughty Dog on the game. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so I feel like it, it just shows that there's some love in between these companies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it, it, it goes back to what you were saying, Camille, is that, yeah, it's it's all of no, well, not specifically us in this in this panel here, but the gaming industry as a whole pitting these two companies against each other in yeah. this console war. You can go on Xbox's Twitter account and see how many times they go and slip into someone's thread and just congratulate them on whether a game goes gold, like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart or something like that, or when the last Uncharted game came out. Xbox is always in there saying, like, congratulations, can't wait to play it. They always had their social members reach out to the quote-unquote competitors. Um, yeah, it's just a facade out there. I mean, these these guys are pretty pretty nice to each other and i think that you know game respects game and <laughs> xbox is, is real, right there real yeah recognizes real no doubt exactly about it. i think to, to play on the other side of that a little bit too though this is uh, not that this would have been any secret i think everyone who's uh who's kind of been in the know or has been involved in the industry in some way or shape or form would already know this but yeah xbox is playing these games the people at xbox are playing these playstation exclusives and they look at something like the last of us part two potentially as a blueprint mm -hmm. for how narrative driven story driven games should be presented uh and that could mean nothing but good things for consumers who are a fan of xbox because mm -hmm. who knows what they're how they're trying to pivot what they're trying to do with the acquisition of all these studios and what they're going to do when it comes to these exclusives coming to xbox in these next couple of years you know this if you look at the last of us 2 whether you like the game or not it has a strong narrative it has a narrative that creates conversation and if we're going to get exclusives like that or of that caliber close to it at least from xbox then that just means nothing but good things for us, the consumers, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, and we talked about, sorry to cut you off. No, no, you're We talked you're about previously how Xbox doesn't have a big title like Last of Us, God of War. Like, sure, Halo, but it, it, Halo, right? You know, it, it's Halo. And for me, Last of Us 2, because I still haven't played it, because I'm waiting to get a PS5 so I can play it at the best possible way, but... It, it's that it's like the end game it's it's the infinity war that of the gaming industry like it is something that i think you weren't like overstating at all caboose it kind of changed everything it, it mm -hmm. reset the standard for narrative storytelling and for it to do that especially after something like god of war is incredible and i'm hoping that xbox sees the value in a game like this and i think like you said, we have these preconceptions of the console war because gamers love conflict. But at the end of the day, I think more so on the Xbox side than on the Sony side, most Xbox executives are gamers, mm -hmm. right? They, they love these games. They, they've yep. been in the culture. So they're not going to look at that and be like, nah, we didn't make that, so forget about it. They're, mm -hmm. they're going to look at that and make the next steps forward. And I think that just details something exciting for the future of Xbox have had the chance to experience and look at the other side you know grass is always greener right and in this case mm -hmm. it really is greener but now they have the chance to go back and, and kind of set the foundations and set the seed uh for all these amazing small properties to kind of pop up but then to add on to that too right last of us two ran i mean last of us one walked so that way last of us two could run right yeah. yeah they they need to start setting up these ips that they're going to have some failures but then they're going to have some of these cult hits and as soon as xbox you know really starts doing that because i don't think i don't think that anything that bethesda puts out is going to be that for xbox i think people mm. are always going to look at bethesda games as bethesda games yeah. xbox needs to come up with these original ideas and ips that kind of take people by surprise so that way the second iteration can captivate people 
And once mm. they do that, then they're really going to be successful. Well, I, like I think imagine. when we, we pit, like just going on what you said, we're pitting each other or pitting these uh, two companies against each other as gamers and, you know, the fan base. We like conflict and we like to think we know everything. The fact of the matter is how the industry works. Developers, a huge part of their job as well is staying current on the games that gamers are playing. They're going to play the other titles from the other game. You you better like I I'm so sure PlayStation developers uh, for those exclusives, you know, from Sony Monica, they're definitely playing other games as well and seeing mm -hmm. what they could use, seeing how they could better certain mechanics that are probably in, you know, Xbox games as well. Um, so it, it goes both sides, right? Um, yeah. It only makes sense that Xbox would play the game that everybody's talking about. So it shouldn't be that surprising. And they're doing their homework. So like you said, Malik, they can hopefully implement these narrative, you know, driven games into their um, cycle of game releases, right? Um, so, so it's just, it's not necessarily something to be surprised about. It's just showing that they're doing their homework as I would hope and think PlayStation is also doing their homework. Like we talked about right. Malik before, you know, you were saying how you think PlayStation is you know, they're kind of going to realize that their exclusivity, their exclusive titles won't last them, you know, how long they think it will last them. But you bet that they're doing their homework. They're seeing how they could dip their toes in their water without putting their whole body submerged in, in, the, yeah. in the pool, right? They're, they're just seeing how they could implement um, some of the ideas of current gen gamers um in terms of cross-platform or playing on different platforms um with with you know steam or whatever other outlets that are out there and there or something like game pass seeing how they could access um a library of games they're just seeing how they could do that in the way they want to do it where it still makes playstation um stand tall and offer something that's very special to their platform and not just diminish everything that they've kind of worked up um Absolutely. to have right yeah and i know that the the output between xbox and and playstation is quite different especially in regards to the games that they even develop but a, a great one-to-one -one comparison is forza versus gran turismo like you have to imagine that the gran turismo developers are looking at forza every single yeah. year and saying how can we do this because it, it i'm not a huge racing sim uh fan but it's well regarded that forza is above gran turismo in certain aspects and i'm sure that sony and uh the developers are like okay well, like what do they have that we very nice <laughs> uh, like what do they have that we can't capture like there has to be something and yeah they do their homework they they go and do everything that they can to to not only replicate, but be inspired by someone else. That's all art is, is inspiration and, you know, stealing someone else's work and putting your own personality and spin on it. That's art. Yeah. And you know what's so crazy, too, is if you if you just look at the branding of, of Gran Turismo versus Forza, it is very clear which one's a PlayStation title and which yeah. one's an Xbox title. That's true. Like Gran Turismo is that slick, modern, nice, professional, you know, and then Xbox is the, and Forza is the more fun, arcadey, you know, bright, colorful. You don't mm -hmm. think that for Motorsport... Uh, it, I think it's uh, like with, a bit of that professional... Yeah, like Motorsport yeah. definitely has that... The same thing that like Gran Turismo has, in my opinion, anyways. No, they did, but I think that Forza, um, and I can't remember the name of the studio that developed um, Horizons, but mm. Horizons allowed them to step out of their shell and be something besides just motorsports. Yeah, that's true. Up until Fair that enough. point, the only like open world game, like driving games that did well, was Need for Speed. Yeah. We saw mm -hmm. the crew fail, um, and, and Dirt kind of had its own like mini success. But I think that Xbox allowing that Forza studio to just kind of try something new and break beyond into an area that you know wasn't successful for other driving companies. It's that's a big attribution to you know what Xbox has planned, like we talked about. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah.